one of the most significant space exploration projects in history was launched on board a two-stage Titan IVB Centaur rocket from Cape Canaveral Station on October 15, 1997. The Cassini-Huygens space project would explore Saturn's planet and shed light on a host of fascinating mysteries regarding this enormous gaseous body and its natural satellites. Three space organizations worked together to create the Cassini-Huygens mission and 27 nations provided funding for its creation. The Cassini Orbiter was created by NASA and JPL. While the Italian Space Agency was charged with delivering Cassini's high-gain communication antenna, the European Space Agency, ESA, produced the Huygens probe. The mission was known as Cassini Huygens because it consisted of two parts, the Cassini Space Exploration Probe, which would orbit the planets to gather data from numerous bodies, and the Huygens Landing Probe, which would attempt to land on a moon of Saturn and conduct surface research there. A Long Journey The primary objective of Cassini's mission was to investigate Saturn. This required a great distance trip that had to be completed in a hurry. The Cassini spacecraft used planet flybys to accelerate and change course in order to get to its goal, Saturn. The Cassini spacecraft made four flybys in all, including two of Venus, one of Earth, and one of Jupiter. The probe was positioned to shield the instruments from heat because, during its second flyby of Venus, the spacecraft approached 90 million kilometers from our star. Throughout that entire time, from launch to several months after flying over our planet, the spacecraft remained oriented with its primary antenna facing the sun. On August 18th, 55 days after the second flyby of Venus, the spacecraft made its way back to Earth from a distance of 1,000 kilometers at a speed of 19 kilometers per second, 68,000 kilometers per hour. This time, nine of the probe's instruments were activated to make observations of the Earth-Moon system and take stunning pictures of our planet and its satellite. The anticipated rendezvous with Jupiter finally took place more than 9.7 million kilometers from the planet. Despite being so far away, the spacecraft was able to gather invaluable information on Jupiter's atmosphere and other information from the magnetosphere that was crucial for understanding how Jupiter's magnetic field affected the rest of the solar system. The fact that radio waves carried from Earth to Cassini were bent by the Sun's gravitational field and delayed their arrival was one of the most important findings made during the mission of the Cassini space probe. Albert Einstein's theory of relativity, which years earlier had predicted this behavior due to the presence of strong gravitational fields, was helped by this measurement of the time change of the signals caused by the movement of the Earth and the ship, as well as the action of the gravitational field of the Sun. Arrival in Saturn in June 2004, the Cassini spacecraft arrived at its destination and began taking stunning pictures of Saturn, its extraordinary rings, and its unidentified satellites. The two new satellites met one and Pallene, which are located between the orbits of Mimas and Enceladus, were found by Cassini in his first days orbiting Saturn. The two natural satellites are not round in shape. That is, because MIT-1 and Pallene are small satellites, their gravitational pull is not strong enough to give them a spherical shape, leading to their asymmetrical morphologies. Later on June 11, 2004, Cassini made a pass over the moon Phoebe, confirming what many scientists already knew, that this natural satellite is the only one that orbits Saturn in the opposite direction from the other satellites. In addition, Cassini's images of the moon suggest that it may contain liquid water beneath the surface. The first human-made spacecraft, Cassini, orbited Saturn on July 1, 2004, capturing the first detailed pictures of this gas giant. As a result, we were able to glimpse this lovely planet and its mysterious rings in a way we had never seen them before. Since Cassini's images were of such high resolution, we were able to see another ring on Saturn that was hidden from view by ordinary telescopes. Titan Is Titan the Earth's twin? The largest satellite on this planet Titan was within striking distance of Cassini just one day after the spacecraft arrived at Saturn. 
Pictures from the probe's camera revealed that Titan's surface resembled early Earth and that it was dry and covered with polished stones. The only satellite with a sizable atmosphere and the only body except Earth where surface signs of stable liquid bodies have been identified is Titan. To explore Titan from within, the Huygens landing probe parted ways with the Cassini exploration mission on December 25, 2005. Huygens successfully landed on Titan's surface on January 14, 2005, and he made an amazing discovery. The only way humans could see the planets of the solar system before sending missions to investigate them was through telescopes, but this had numerous drawbacks, particularly for those bodies like Venus and Titan that had very dense and impenetrable atmospheres that prohibited us from seeing their surfaces. Titan's Huygens probe landing allowed us to learn that this satellite is primarily made of ice and rocky material and has liquid hydrocarbon lakes in its polar regions. The geological age of Titan's surface is young. Its surface is smooth and has few impact craters despite the mountains and the discovery of many potential cryovolcanoes, indicating considerable erosion activity covering the youthful craters. Data from the Huygens probe suggests that Titan's atmosphere may be mostly nitrogen, with up to 6% of methane and other complicated hydrocarbon molecules. The weather is mostly determined by seasonal patterns, just like on Earth, and the climate, including wind and rain, produces land-like features like dunes, rivers, lakes, and seas, likely made of liquid methane and ethane. Titan's methane cycle closely parallels Earth's water cycle, though at a far lower temperature, thanks to its liquids, both surface and subterranean, and strong nitrogen atmosphere. Given this information about the satellite, is it possible that there are organisms on Titan that have adapted to the climatic conditions there? We don't know, which is why NASA is presently working on a mission to send a probe named Dragonfly to Titan. It will go through the satellite on a drone. Regrettably, the launch that was originally planned for 2024 will instead take place in 2027 due to the pandemic. Enceladus is another planet that might support life. While exploring Saturn's moons in 2005, Cassini came upon the moon Enceladus and found that it has a large atmosphere with thick layers of ice and a weak electromagnetic field. Moreover, it was conceivable to see geysers that shot forth jets of ice and water vapor, possibly from miles deep oceans. We now know that cryovolcanoes near Enceladus South Pole release significant amounts of ice into space in the form of geysers and jets of water vapor, other volatile substances, and solid material that included sodium chloride crystals and ice particles, thanks to pictures taken by the Cassini probe. Observations show that the geysers on Enceladus can erupt up to 200 kilograms per second. More than 100 geysers have been found in Cassini photos to date. Scientists came to the conclusion that while most of the water vapor from the geysers escapes and goes into one of Saturn's rings, some of it also falls back as snow and covers the impact craters on the surface of the satellite. 2017, NASA Science, there is a chance that aquatic life exists beneath Enceladus kilometers of ice because NASA stated in 2014 that it had discovered evidence of the existence of a sizable subterranean ocean of water around 10 kilometers thick at the South Pole. Giant Spots and Hexagonal Storms the Cassini probe was able to witness the massive large white spot of Saturn during its flyby of Saturn on October 25, 2012. It is a meteorological event that is unique to the solar system and comprises of a storm that is roughly the size of the Earth and occurs once every 30 years. One of the strongest storm systems is found on Saturn. One of the most puzzling sights of the solar system is that of Saturn's strange hexagonal structure, which Cassini was able to capture on high-quality video in 2013. The hexagon of Saturn is assumed to have evolved because there is a large latitudinal difference in the speed of atmospheric winds there. As a result, even though it is at the pole, it rotates as quickly as if it were at the planet's equator. The Grand Finale of Cassini the Cassini probe had nearly all of its fuel used up by 2017, and each time, its instruments were slowly shutting down. 
So, NASA engineers were forced to choose between killing the spacecraft or abandoning it in the hopes of finding it again in the future. The findings Cassini made suggested that Saturn's satellites were extremely promising and that some of them might contain life. If they set it free, there was a chance that the probe would strike one of the moons eventually. We would eventually contaminate that area, decreasing the likelihood of discovering any living things there. Hence, it was ultimately decided to intentionally kill the ship by having it collide with Saturn. Keep in mind that as Saturn is a gas giant, when Cassini hits the atmosphere it will self-destruct, turning to dust owing to the strong friction with the planet's clouds. Therefore, in April 2017, Cassini started its final journey, performing 22 dives across the region between Saturn and its rings, capping up nearly 20 years of outstanding science and photographs. The great end of Cassini came on September 15, 2017, as it completed its final orbit around the planet and plunged into Saturn's dense clouds, where it slowly disintegrated in its atmosphere. Despite its tragic end, the Cassini probe delivered us crucial information about Saturn's clouds in its final moments of existence that has since improved our understanding of how that planet evolved. Would you like more videos like this where we talk about the contributions of the most important spacecraft in history? Let us know your opinion in the comments of this video.